Uh, hi, good, uh, good afternoon. This is uh, Dr. Brian Murphy. I'm the CEO of Emerald Bioscience. Uh, Emerald Bioscience is a biotech company located in Southern California. And what I would like to do is walk you through our public slide deck uh, to give you an idea of what kind of research we're doing and what some of our company corporate goals are. Uh, this uh, is our introductory slide and our goal is to improve health through cannabinoid-based targeted therapeutics. We are about, our corporate culture is about precision medicine using synthetic derivatives of cannabinoid molecules. And cannabinoid molecules are the molecules or active substances in the cannabis plant. The only difference being is that we have bioengineered those compounds so that they have more predictable pharmacokinetics. In other words, we're much better able to predict what the level will be in your blood, as well as better bioavailability in so much as you're able or we're able to direct those molecules to specific target tissues involved in disease. In, uh, on slide four, you'll see the, there's a listing there of key corporate milestones from last year. Uh, central to our uh, accomplishments was securing an all fields license from the University of Mississippi for our two lead molecules. Again, these are synthetic derivatives. One is a prodrug of THC, and that's THC valine hemisuccinate or THC val HS or THC VHS. The other is an analog of CBD, cannabidiol, and that is CBD valine hemisuccinate or CBD val HS. When we say all fields licenses, that means given our relationship with the University of Mississippi, which is still the only entity in the United States with a federal license to grow, cultivate, and research ca uh, cannabis and cannabinoids autonomously, they've held that license since 1968. So they're a great source of intellectual capital, having studied these compounds for more than 50 years. So the All Fields license permits us to explore uh, the use of these molecules for any indication, using any formulation, via any route of administration for both human and veterinary uses. In addition, last year, the DEA ruled that our analog of CBD was not a controlled substance. Most substances that have been approved that are cannabinoids, such as Marinol, uh, which is uh, an oral form of THC, uh, Sesamet, which is also an oral form of THC, and Epidiolex, which is an oral form of CBD, uh, those are scheduled substances. Uh, so it was really a landmark decision for us to have the DEA rule that our analog was not a controlled substance. In addition, we also added to our executive committee with Dr. Dennis Kim assuming the role of chief medical officer and Ms. Alice Chen joining the company as executive director of clinical operations. Uh, both of them have more than 20 years experience in biotech or pharmaceutical development. We also recruited a globally recognized expert panel in ophthalmology, and the last slide in this deck uh, gives a detail on who those uh, global experts are. In addition, at the last board meeting of the, uh, of the company in 2019, the board approved the co a company name change to MB Pharmaceuticals. As I mentioned, MB, E-M-B-I is our ticker symbol, and pharmaceuticals, we, we decided to uh, include that in the name of the company in order to distinguish us from other companies that may be developing medical cannabis or uh, just extracting the molecules from the plant and using those uh, uh, for some medical indications. So we wanted to make it clear to everybody that we are in fact a pharmaceutical company making uh, drugs and taking those candidate uh, drug formulations through the, the normal regulatory pathway at the FDA. Well, we also reported the exercise of 40.8 million warrants uh, uh, by Emerald Health Sciences, which offset uh, a little over $4 million in debt under a multi-drug credit agreement that uh, we entered into in October of 2018. Upon exercise of the warrants, the aggregate reduced outstanding principal uh, balance of this debt uh, is now a little over $2 million. In addition, Dr. Aftar Dillon offered his resignation as chairman of the board 
and uh, also his position as chairman of the Finance and Business Development Committee. Dr. Dillon, Dillon plans to devote more time to uh, the parent company who uh, invested in us, Emerald Health Sciences. And after that company, Dr. Dillon serves as both CEO and director. So to replace Dr. Dillon as chairman of the board uh, will be Mr. Puneet Dillon, an existing member of the board, and he will act as chairman of the board and also assume the duty as chairman of the Finance and Business Development Committee to fill the vacancies created by Dr. Dillon. If we uh, transition over to slide five, uh, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about our lead compound, NB1111. This is the pro-drug of THC that's being developed for the treatment of glaucoma. If we look at slide six, certainly glaucoma is a significant global unmet medical need. Uh, the market right now for glaucoma is essentially a non-responder market where more than 50% of patients require two or more therapies in order to manage this condition. The market for glaucoma is roughly uh, $4.8 billion globally and growing with, with an aging uh, population, with a compounded annual growth rate or CAGR of 6.6%. The market in the United States approaches $3 billion with roughly 35 million prescriptions written a year just in the United States for the management of glaucoma. And as I mentioned, these are predominantly a non-responder market where more than 50% of patients are on two or more medications. There is a high unmet medical need in the glaucoma space. This is uh, the number two cause of blindness uh, globally and uh, that blindness or vision loss is irreversible. Once uh, the cells that make up the optic nerve perish, uh, there is no replacing those cells. So this is a progressive disease, usually requiring multiple medications to manage. The purpose of using cannabinoids is that uh, we have uh, shown that uh, these molecules demonstrate both efficacy and neuroprotection in protecting the retinal ganglion cells or cells that make up the uh, the, the optic nerve. Uh, cannabinoids have exhibited neuroprotective qualities both in vitro and in vivo with multiple animal species related to preservation of the optic nerve. And THC has demonstrated activity to lower intraocular pressure or IOP by a multiple uh, routes of administration. On slide seven, you will see that glaucoma is not just a problem in Western economies. Uh, Asia presents one of the largest markets for glaucoma. China is home to 18% of the world's glaucoma patients. It is the largest glaucoma market in the world, while India accounts for 15%. What differentiates the Asian market from the Western markets is that in Western economies, the glaucoma is something what we call hypertensive glaucoma. In other words, the pressure in the eye is elevated. In Asian glaucoma markets, the vast majority of patients have something called normotensive glaucoma. In other words, the uh, tension in the eye or the pressure in the eye isn't elevated, but there is still a uh, demise of the cells that make up the optic nerve. And it's because of this and because that cannabinoids have exhibited the direct neuroprotection to the cells that make up the optic nerve that we feel cannabinoids could be a major market entrant into Asian markets for the management of glaucoma. On slide eight, you can see that um, NB1111, or uh, the pro-drug of THC, achieves tissue penetration into organs in the eye that regulate intraocular pressure. This is an arabic glaucoma model. The rabbit species is one of the required animal species for submission of ophthalmology data to uh, regulatory agencies, including the FDA. In the extreme right uh, column or bar, you see THC SLN. SLN stands for solid lipid nanoparticle. And what we did to get THC a fighting chance is that we bundled it in a solid lipid nanoparticle in an effort to try to get THC into the eye using an eye drop. And as you can tell from the height of the bar graphs, that uh, THC just does not enter the eye all that dramatically. Whereas if you go to the extreme left, using the prodrug of THC in a solid lipid nanoparticle, you can see a significant uh, penetration into the eye of the prodrug of THC. The middle bar graph is actually uh, using THC valley chess 
is something called Toker Resolve, which is kind of a distant cousin of Izeem. It's not exactly an optimized formulation, but we use that just to show the uh, dramatic uh, ability of re-engineering this molecule to get it into the eye. And I should add that outside of the human brain, the eye is one of the highest densities of cannabinoid receptors in the human body. And these receptors are in very high concentration on the organs in the eye that regulate intraocular pressure. So what I wanted to do now is just digress a little and show you the evolution of cannabinoid delivery into the eye. Uh, and if we move to slide 10, this shows uh, an intraocular pressure versus time profile using the prodrug of THC versus two approved drugs that are already on the market for glaucoma. One is a beta blocker called Timolol, and the other drug is pilocarpine. And this is in a rabbit model of glaucoma. And as you can see, we, we put the prodrug of THC in that toca resolve substance. And what we were able to observe is that within an hour, there was dramatic decline in the intraocular pressure that was statistically significantly better than the, uh, the two approved therapies, timolol and pilocarpine. The only drawback is that by using toca resolve, as you can see the, in, in the green curve, uh, which represents the THC LHS, the IOP starts to creep up and uh, it reaches almost baseline uh, at about 240 minutes. So this would necessitate, if we went with this formulation, uh, the need to have multiple applications during the day uh, uh, for the management of intra elevated intraocular pressure. We don't think that's feasible. And so what we set upon doing is trying to come up with a formulation that uh, was a little bit more amenable to people's lifestyles, either a once a day or a twice a day dosing. So if you look at slide 11, you can see here, this is multiple different formulations of the prodrug of THC. In the red uh, or the, the maroon colored top line, uh, this is the toca resolve again. And as you can see, just as we saw in the animal, uh, in the rabbit study of glaucoma, at a, between 160 and 240 minutes, the IOP crept back up again. But when we took the THC LHS and put it in something called a nano emulsion, uh, <clears throat> we achieved uh, much longer activity. And then when we added uh, carbapol, which is the blue line, uh, carbapol is something what we call a viscosity enhancer. It's designed to increase the residence time of an eye drop medication on the cornea or that outer covering of the eye. When we added carbapol, it actually produced even better results, uh, whereby we had a significant decline in IOP for a much longer period of time. So in the next slide on slide 12, uh, here we looked at an average IOP versus time profile using a single dose of latanoprost versus THD LHS versus timolol. I should add that latanoprost and timolol used either alone or in combination uh, comprise more than 90% of the prescriptions used for glaucoma. And as you can see with the top line, uh, that's in that green line, that is the average IOP or intraocular pressure response to timolol. The middle line, uh, the blue line, is the average IOP response of latanoprost. The bottom line uh, is the average IOP response of the prodrug of THC in a nano emulsion with carbapol. And this was very significant in that uh, we were, not, we, were, uh, we were able to show not only that the IOP was lowered in a superior manner versus these two approved medication, latanoprost and timolol, but that with the new formulation, the drug worked for a longer period of time and could possibly be dosed once a day, pending what we find in human studies. Uh, again, uh, th that was a single dose, and on slide 13, this is a multiple dose over five days. And as you can see, we were able to replicate the superior IOP lowering found with the prodrug of THC versus latanoprost and timolol. Uh, it lowered IOP in a statistically superior fashion for a longer period of time. Uh, the next slide, slide 14, is uh, what we call in, a, in the business a busy slide. Uh, but what I will do is summarize uh, what we found. In addition, as I mentioned before, in addition to lowering IOP, cannabinoids have been found to be directly 
neuroprotective of the optic nerve. And what these graphs uh, uh, look at, these are essentially what we call confocal micrographs. And what they do is they stain for different types of molecules in the tissue. And what we were able to find using uh, THC, which is the active part of the prodrug NB1111, we were able to show that a THC uh, lowers IOP probably in a multifactorial method, meaning that in addition to just increasing flow out of the eye, it also decreased inflammation, decreased fibrosis, and it also uh, had an effect on something what we call neovascularization, which it inhibited. Neovascularization is the growth of new blood vessels in tissues. You can see neovascularization in tissues that are recovering from an injury. Sometimes you see this in cardiac tissue after a heart attack. You can also see it in, on the other extreme in cancer cells. Cancer cells need to grow new blood vessels. But one area in the eye where you see this phenomena is also in macular degeneration. And so in addition to glaucoma, this data also gives us a lead that, these, that this particular molecule may be useful in the treatment of macular degeneration. And as we progress through the glaucoma studies and into the clinic, macular degeneration may also be on the target list for this molecule. I mentioned neuroprotection, and on slide 15, you can basically see in the A panel uh, on the right side of the slide, uh, this is a, uh, these are retinal ganglion cells that light up when they're exposed to dye. Um, and uh, in the A panel, this is just a normal retina. And in the B panel, this is what uh, happens when you induce glaucoma. Those cells die off and they don't take up the dye. And in slide C, you can, in panel C, you can see that when we use a compound that's similar to THC, it doesn't look all that much different from panel A. Those, those retinal ganglion cells remain robust and take up the dye. However, when you induce glaucoma as in, in panel D, you can see uh, panel D looks much better uh, than panel B. There are many more retinal ganglion cells that survived and took up the dye. In panel E, <coughs> excuse me, in panel E, uh, you can see a situation where we used a THC-like com uh, compound in combination with an inhibitor of that compound. And so uh, you see that, um, it doesn't look that much different from panels C and A. The, uh, the uh, retinal ganglion cells are alive and doing well. However, when you induce uh, the glaucoma in, slide, in panel F uh, and then introduce the THC-like compound plus an inhibitor of that compound, you can see that panel F resembles panel B. So this experiment was very eloquent in helping to show that uh, THC, the active moiety in our prodrug, actually has a direct effect on preserving the cells that make up the optic nerve. What I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the development plan just to highlight some milestones. So if we can transition to slide 17, in the first half of this year, uh, we have already opened our office in Australia. We plan on performing the first human studies of this drug in glaucoma in Australia. The reason we do that is, um, the main reason is a financial reason, uh, that uh, Australia has a rebate program upwards of 43% on what we spend there. And so if you're an early stage biotech company like MB, uh, getting that money back is very, very important. Uh, we have already picked the Clinical Research Organization, or CRO, and we're in the process now of finalizing the manufacturing scale up of THC ValHS and the fill and finish. We're also initiating an animal ocular study looking at combination uh, therapies, not just using one therapy, but different combinations to see if we can even further optimize the effect of this prodrug of THC. In the second half of this year, we plan to initiate a single ascending dose or SAD study in healthy volunteers, as well as initiate a multiple ascending dose or MAD study. And that study would actually be in patients with mild to moderate glaucoma or ocular hypertension. We also plan to initiate a, cannab a, a cannabinoid a neuroprotection study. And uh, I would say look in the coming months for the announcement on our partner in that research uh, endeavor. As I mentioned, we also have a analog of CBD, CBD-LHS, 
maybe uh, go to slide 19. Uh, just some highlights of what we've already learned about that drug. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the DEA has determined that it is not a regulated chemical or controlled substance, and patents have already been granted for that uh, compound, the analog of CBD, in South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. I should add that the prodrug of THC already has a global patent footprint with uh, patents granted for the prodrug of THC throughout Asia, North America, uh, the EU, and, and the UK. What we have already seen with CBD LHS is that it is more chemically stable than C native CBD and can be effectively distributed into multiple organ compartments with enhanced uptake in the liver. It does cross the blood brain barrier more effectively than CBD. And we'll be looking at the effect of this analog of CBD in future experiments on uh, neuron systems that are found in the brain. It also does not readily convert to THC when exposed to an, a, an acidic environment like the stomach. So we've conducted some in vitro neurology studies as well as an ex vivo human ocular studies. Ex vivo human uh, uh, studies mean that these are human tissues used outside of the body. In vitro neurology study is that we uh, use tissues that, uh, 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 that are not necessarily extracted uh, for, uh, from the humans, but are human-like tissues. So we contracted with a company called Stemonics uh, uh, to look at the neurologic studies. And what we found was that the analog of CBD, CBD LHS is pharmacologically and therapeutically distinct from CBD. It also displayed anti-seizure activity in an epilepsy model that paralleled that observed with CBD. Uh, and animal studies we feel are warranted to assess the potency of this analog of CBD versus CBD itself uh, relative to the bioavailability or the ability of the analog of CBD to cross the blood brain barrier in an intact, in, in an, an intact animal or human. Uh, uh, and so that we have a study that's going to be conducted at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia or CHOP in uh, a rodent or murine mouse epilepsy model. The Glauconics ocular studies also found something similar, that the analog of CBD was pharmacologically and therapeutically distinct from CBD and also significantly lowered biomarkers of inflammation and fibrosis, as I mentioned previously. In fact, uh, it was 100 times more potent than CBD in this uh, biomarker model. Also importantly, the analog of CBD had no effect on intraocular pressure. Some studies have shown that CBD may elevate intraocular pressure. And so it was very important for us to demonstrate that the analog of CBD did not uh, elevate IOP in this model. The data for this study has been accepted for presentation at ARVO, which is one of the top three ophthalmology uh, meetings, scientific meetings in the world. And that data will be presented in May of this year at the ARVO meeting in Baltimore. On slide 21, just some development timelines. We're going to uh, uh, develop CGMP or this uh, uh, API. API is active pharmaceutical ingredient for CBD uh, Valley Jess. And we're going to initiate a study of this molecule on IOP in uh, laboratory animals. In addition, we're going to also initiate a study of its antiviral activity as well as, as, well as its impact on hepatic tissue. Uh, as you may or may not know, the FDA has raised some concerns that CBD, the native CBD, when administered orally may inflame uh, some of the cells. And it doesn't happen in everybody, but it does. It did happen uh, in some human trials. Uh, and so what we want to do is understand whether or not there is a protective mechanism by this analog of CBD on hepatic tissue. As I mentioned, we're also doing an epilepsy study at CHOP. And we're also assessing uh, an animal study, the uh, analgesic effect of CBD HS. In 2018, we published an article that showed that CBD HS had the analgesic capacity in a uh, rodent model of uh, chemotherapy-induced neuropathy. Neuropathy is a very painful syndrome that can develop in patients that, can, that are exposed sometimes to chemotherapeutic agents. We were able to show that CBD LHS had analgesic or pain, pain relief capacity comparable to morphine uh, in that study. So pain relief is something that's on our radar uh, for this drug. 
And then in the second half of this year, we're going to explore some extraocular formulations of, of this drug. We're going to go outside of the eye and we'll focus on developing a clinical plan for the use of this drug both in the eye and outside of the eye. On slide 22, this just gives you a schematic overview of what our pipeline is. As I mentioned, the prodrug of THC is entering phase one studies this year for the treatment of glaucoma. Uh, the prodrug of CBD is in the preclinical phase now for ocular disease. We've been able to show using the nano emulsion formulation that we've been able to get that drug into all compartments of the eye just using an eye drop. And as I just mentioned, we're also gonna be exploring some experimental data looking at CBD LHS in the liver or hepatic studies, as well as exploring the analgesic capabilities of the drug. And these are uh, the analgesic uh, studies are in the preclinical phase. Lastly, on the cannabinoid platform, this relates to data that we presented a couple of years ago that showed a proprietary combination of cannabinoid molecules was able to eliminate MRSA or methicillin resistant staph aureus. Um, uh, and in fact, um, it, it, uh, this cannabinoid cocktail was effective against four species of MRSA. And uh, we are in early talks right now with the US government as far as screening this cannabinoid cocktail against other infective organisms, some of which are on the bioterrorism list. Um, and so we, will, uh, we, look, we look forward to updating investors on that as those talks progress and as that data comes in. Lastly, on uh, the slide 23, this just gives a capitalization table. Uh, this is uh, circa uh, January uh, 10th. So I would recommend going to our current uh, uh, price or, uh, when you view this, uh, uh, this slide. But this does give you an idea of the number of outstanding common shares, options and warrants and convertible debt. We have roughly 217.6 million shares on a fully diluted basis. And as I mentioned earlier, our largest shareholder is Emerald Health Sciences. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, our office, we are located in Long Beach, California, as well as maintaining an office on the campus of the University of Mississippi in Oxford, Mississippi. Uh, the university functioned as, as both our discovery and research partner. Our management biographies are included in the slide deck and I will let you uh, read those at your leisure. Uh, on slide 25, uh, gives a listing of our board of directors and uh, strategic advisors. Uh, and then on slide 26, for a small early stage company, we have just a stellar ophthalmology board uh, with Dr. Jeffrey Goldberg, who's uh, chairman of the Department of Ophthalmology and a full professor at Stanford. Um, and uh, his research interests are in glaucoma and specifically protecting the optic nerve or neuroprotection, which is exactly one of our major differentiators, product differentiators for cannabinoids. In addition, there's Louis Pasquale, a uh, former uh, chair of ophthalmology at Harvard. He's now transitioned over and is uh, uh, site chair of the Department of Ophthalmology at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York and vice chair of translational research uh, at that healthcare system. And also Robert Ridge, uh, who uh, holds a uh, endowed chair also at Mount Sinai and is Director of Glaucoma Research at New York Eye and Ear Infirmary. Uh, Dr. Rich also notably, in addition to a global reputation in this field, uh, was one of the founders of the uh, Glaucoma Research Society of America. So uh, with that, I thank you uh, for uh, participating and, and viewing our presentation on slide uh, 27. Please uh, note that if you would like more information, please go to invest at emeraldbio.life. And again, thank you for your attention.